Hey there everybody, and welcome back to more Fatal Frame. The last time we were attempting to follow behind Tomoe through a number of locked doors. Let's see if we can't catch up with him. And that was pretty unexpected. We actually run across the ghostly apparition of Mr. Takamine. Let's go ahead and see if he has anything interesting to say. Nothing too new there, but it is pretty unexpected that we run across him while Tomoy is still walking around. But he was nice enough to leave behind his lighter, along with some additional writings of his, hopefully shedding some more light on the situation. Though I think at this particular point in his story, he was a bit more focused on surviving and trying to help Tomoy than, well, looking into the ritual anymore. Speaking of the ritual, we have been seeing quite a few of these mirrors around the mansion. And Miku might be right in the fact that these mirrors might have some deeper meaning. It definitely seems that Tomoy is still leading us somewhere. Though after having dealt with the editor beforehand, I kind of question whether or not we should actually be following her. Especially after the horrible, horrible things that she's apparently been seeing with her sixth, sixth sense. With the dripping of water, we find ourselves in a very peculiar looking room. Just full of water and... I'm not even certain what this room is supposed to be for. But, as expected, much like the editor, Tomoe has gone hostile towards us. And she is a lot more dangerous than Ogata was. She's a lot quicker, she's a lot more damaging, and don't let her docile nature fool you. At any particular moment, she'll decide to turn and charge at us, as you already have seen. That's why, more than anything, it's good just to dispatch her as quickly as possible in this particular room. As you can probably tell from our surroundings, we are very limited in our movement space. So in all earnesty, it's honestly not even worth waiting for a shutter moment. And 
that after having defeated Tomoy, she does leave behind yet a final red tape for us to listen to. First things first though, with this heavy breathing it might get in the way of our listening to that tape, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of healing. Hopefully this does illustrate a bit more why they've been a bit generous with the healing items. But let's go ahead and listen to that red tape that we found. Since we met that girl, I've seen many strange visions. All the ghosts in the mansion howl and scream at me. I don't think they'll ever let me out of this mansion. I don't even know how long I can hold on to my sanity. Anyway, I'm leaving this tape. If ever someone listens to this, please tell me what has happened to me. But still, I hope it's just a dream. And sadly, it actually wasn't a dream, Tomoe. It was a horrible reality. But as we venture back through this room, if we actually look in the water, it might be a bit hard to see. But where Tomoe floated up to the surface, there actually is, well, a pool of blood, which will never go away. Just a nice little piece of interest. Also, my ghost sense is tingling. Yeah, we have nice little hidden ghosts right here in the rafters. Really nothing to indicate that it's there outside of a little bit of a sound distortion. Some of the hidden ghosts actually do not trigger the viewfinder, which can make finding them a little bit difficult. In front of the door here, we do find yet even more from Tomoe. And this time, she does mention a little girl in a white kimono. We've actually been seeing that little girl here and there. And she does seem to be a little bit less ferocious than Kirei has come across. Maybe she's here to help us. But we have yet another puzzle door to solve. And we actually already do have the information for this particular door. As we get to the hint, even though it is a bit vague in regards to the Chosen Maiden and Purifies, we actually only have one other number that we can possibly use right now, which is 3,669. Though I'm honestly hoping that that number wasn't the number of maidens they had to sacrifice, but... Well, I kind of get the feeling that might actually be the case. But before we continue forward, there actually was a reason that Mr. Takamine left behind his lighter. If you remember from the last video, in the Abyss area, there was an unlit lantern that... Well, whenever we took a picture of it, it did leave behind a picture of a lit lantern. So, pretty simple puzzle to figure out, but that does mean we're going to have to do a little bit of backtracking. Thankfully, things are mostly quiet on our way back to the Abyss. One of the few times we actually get a little bit of a respite from the terror.
But let's go ahead and see what this gives us. Seems that there was a hidden chamber hiding a mysterious black carving. Well, we don't actually know what this is for just yet, but if it was hidden away, it's got to have some importance behind it, right? But I guess we should go ahead and head back to that watery room and just keep pressing on forward. Is this new figure? Now we have had mention of missing children before, but I don't know. It still seems a bit disconnected. But my ghostly intuition is telling me that, well, we actually want to backtrack a little bit more. There's actually a easily missed hidden ghost that we actually need to go capture real quick, because I don't think you can get it any other time in the game. It actually requires going back to that rubble room where we had the save point before. And you may recall that large hidden or that large locked door we saw before. Another new ghostly figure that we won't actually be learning about for quite some time. But that's all we needed to do over here. We can now continue on forward. Though I guess if you were playing this yourself, you could save if you really wanted to. But this is a very new occurrence. We actually get our first random ghost encounter. Yeah, this particular ghost is not scripted. And he is more or less just punishment for taking too long to get through the mansion. Thankfully, at this particular point in the game, they are pretty easy on you with these random ghosts. This guy in particular does not really have any special abilities. He's very slow, he doesn't disappear or anything like that, and his shutter chance is really, really large, so, well, just free points for us. But, as we will be seeing in future updates, the random ghost encounters will really be increasing and will definitely get a lot, lot harder. Gotta be quick on the draw for that vanishing ghost. Because right after it, we do get a brand new enemy. Much like the woman with the broken neck. This is just to introduce us to a new enemy. Not too difficult to take care of. The female head mostly just has quite a bit of speed on her side. But in the end, the shutter chance is pretty large. And her only attack is to just charge at you. So... Really, really not that difficult, and not something we'll be seeing too often. But it does remind me that we do have these stairs that we can go up and investigate, so we might as well do that.
on the ground here, we do find a newspaper clipping that actually is connected to something we found back in the storeroom regarding that missing girl, or that girl who went missing for a while in the mountains and was found later. It does mention a particular name there, and that is actually the last name for Miku and Mafuya. Yeah, their family name actually has some prior connection to Himuro Mansion, but we'll find out more about that later. Also, this small door might seem familiar. And if we go ahead and look at our map, we can actually see that it connects to that study and library and balcony area we were at before. Just something good to keep in mind for later on, as this door will not always be locked, so it'll be a useful shortcut for later. Also, you may have noticed as we were heading up the stairs, there was yet another item waiting for us over here. And it is another really, or fairly old looking piece of parchment. And it talks yet even more about these mysterious mirrors. Seems they were used, oh, these five mirrors were used to hold back a major disaster that the author of this piece of paper seems to mention as the calamity. But more importantly, as we get to the end, there is a mention of a, well, a legendary holy mirror. Hmm, guess we'll have to keep an eye out for that, or maybe more mentions of it. But with no other places left to go on this particular floor, I guess it is finally time to head back to that little doorway we opened up in that watery room. And as we head outside, we actually find ourselves in a pretty scenic setting. See bamboo leaves falling, just an overall silence of nature. It'd actually be an almost pleasant scenario if well, we were anywhere else but here. Yet again, we do have a message from Takamine waiting for us. More importantly, we have a supernatural hurricane of things going on around us. A very easily missed vanishing ghost and just some odd presence from this well over here. Now, I'm really not trying to investigate this well, but that item on top of it, the perspective is just a bit off to me, so please bear with me as I do my best to try to get at it. Yeah, waiting for us on the well is a brand new tape. But before... Actually, let's go ahead and listen to it, because I have a good feeling I know who this is from. September 12th, 3.20 p.m. I know this sounds crazy, but there's something here besides us in this mansion. I've seen it myself. It was a woman in a white kimono. Something is definitely happening here. Have we unknowingly awakened? 
find something. Or perhaps we've been lured here to die. That seems like some very overly paranoid thinking, and really, it's nothing more than that. Seems like much like Ogata and Tomoe, Takamine got the indication of ropes as being a bad thing. It is now time for our final fight with Tomoe. She has much more health than she did in the previous room, but she doesn't actually gain any additional abilities outside of... Well, she definitely phases in and out of existence a lot more than we've been used to. But in the end, it's still a good idea to build up the mystical power to its maximum, and to just wait for the perfect opportunity to take a quick snapshot. Yet again, it's still really not a good idea to wait for these shutter moments, as they are very small. Also, a good rule of thumb is any time that a ghost completely disappears, it is pretty much always going to be behind you, so using the quick turn is always a good idea in that circumstance. Tomoe showing off her speed and deadliness. We're actually really close to death right now. And I do hate to admit it, I'm actually not waiting for a shutter chance right now. I'm actually wanting her to finish me off. Mostly because I know that I have a stone mirror waiting that I can use instead of a herbal medicine. Just like that, Tomoe finally is dispatched, questioning Kyrie just what exactly she wanted. And in the end, we're honestly still left with even more questions. Who did we have to tell? What did we have to tell? Well, I think before we continue on, it might be a good idea to use some of our points and upgrade the camera a little bit more. As you can see, even though we've already almost maxed out all the basic performance stats, it's actually going to be pretty expensive to max them out. But also, during that battle, we did see that there was an item waiting for us over here, and a little nook with a save point. And another spirit stone that we will definitely be using at some point in the future. But before we continue on, over in the corner behind this well here is actually a hidden ghost. So there is a hidden away item here. And it would have been even more useful had I actually died during that fight because it is actually yet another stone mirror. Now it may seem like they're just throwing stone mirrors at us left and right even though most of them are hidden, but well, the future chapters will really not be that helpful to us.
So on this tombstone here, we get yet another scrap of notebook from Mr. Takamine. Seems that he was also able to garner some information about these five holy mirrors, and that I guess they were kept in a shrine nearby, and that, well, just possibly there was actually the true holy mirror waiting to be found. The problem is that it seems like it was broken up, and well, I guess Mr. Takamine was trying to piece them back together again in hopes that they might ward off whatever evil was coming after him. In the end, though, I guess that is what we're going to have to be on the lookout for. So we're definitely still on the right track, but before we go and talk to that wisp, there is another easily missed vanishing or hidden ghost in amongst these trees here. Yep, there he is. And again, it's just one of those situations where you have to listen to the distortion in the background. Not really sure what to take away from that. I mean, we definitely haven't seen any Buddha statues. Even though there is actually some overlap between Buddhism rituals and Shinto rituals. Still, I mean, I hope we don't have to go back through the mansion to find some item we overlooked. Also, even though there is a useless stone mirror waiting over there, we do actually find some more Type 37 film. And we see a door that actually looks like the one we saw back in the rubble room. But this is actually one that we can interact with. Now it may seem pretty daunting with all these Japanese characters, but it's actually a simple task of matching up the tiles with, well, the, uh, the adjacent tile. These will actually be popping up later in the game and will be getting increasingly difficult, but this one, since it's just an introduction, is pretty easy to figure out. <laughs> and with the final slid in pace, we can actually slide in that black carving we found before. <laughs> Leading us into a very grisly scene. Looks like someone just exploded in here. We find a blue tape and a number of little Buddha statues. Nothing we can really do here right now.
say hello to the tortured spirit of Mr. Takamine himself. First things first, let's go ahead and pop in some Type 37 film because well, we are definitely going to need it. And secondly, let's get out of this very tiny room. Yeah, if you're doing this fight yourself, the first thing to definitely keep in mind, you want to get as far away from Mr. Takamine as possible. He does quite honestly the most damage of any ghost in this chapter and if you are playing on nightmare he will one shot you now outside of just the sheer damage that he does you'll also notice that he phases in and out of existence just almost constantly so actually getting a good shot on him with a full mystic power meter is actually really difficult He's also very prone to teleporting, but the one thing he has working against him is that, well, he doesn't really have any long-range abilities. The only thing he has on his side is just, well, being incredibly hard to hit and having a shit ton of life. Oh yeah, he also has this. The ability to blind you. This can be a very dangerous situation. Depending on where he is, he can easily get a very cheap shot on you. But as you could probably tell during that particular attack, he has a pretty large shutter chance where you can hit him. Doing a good chunk of extra damage. Just like that, we have now fully dispatched Mr. Takamine. And if you couldn't pick up on the very subtle hints it was giving you between the picture that it gave you and, well, his last ghostly words, there is something waiting for us back at those Shinto gates. First things first, though, it does look like there is a item waiting for us on the steps here. And it is, well, the final words from Mr. Takamine. It seems that he had actually found out where a piece of the true holy mirror was. But, well, it was a little bit uh, too little too late, as he only had four out of the five Buddha statues he was needing. He was actually really close to finding the final one, if only he could have figured out that riddle. In the end, though, he did want to thank his assistant, Tomoe, and his editor for helping him. But in the end, well, it was just not enough. But the one most important clue is where we actually saw that wisp whenever we were heading up here in the first place. It was actually standing over by this particular pillar of the little archway here. Just like that, we find the last remaining piece of the puzzle for the little temple here. And it does give us a little bit of instructions as regards to what we actually have to do with these Buddha statues. It 
So we might as well go ahead and head back into the temple and figure out, well, let's go ahead and finish up the puzzle. Is she the one causing this disaster? All of those earlier deaths, Koji, Tomoe, all of them? Am I the next to die? The Rope Shrine Maiden ritual, as told of in legend. Both arms, legs, and the neck. It is said when all five have been marked, the curse is complete. Ropes are beginning to appear on my photo. I'm running out of time. I had totally forgotten that we did pick up this last blue tape on that altar. But, I mean, I guess it is good to know that... Well, I mean, in the off chance that any rope marks start showing up on us, that... Well, I guess we're pretty much fucked. Also, with Mr. Takamine Dispatch, that odd stain on the floor has mysteriously disappeared. But... Let's go ahead and place that Buddha statue that we found. Because as we do so, it actually does reveal... ...a 3x3 three three grid. And in case you needed a hint for this particular puzzle, we can take a picture which will quite plainly spell out exactly what you need to do. In all retrospect, this isn't too difficult of a puzzle to figure out. All we need to do is to look at what the damaged part of the Buddha is and match it up to the, uh, well, the corresponding hole. As you can actually see, there is something of a bloody figured outline on the 3x3 grid. And what's our prize? Is this the holy mirror? It's just a piece of it. <laughs> 